printing today, and I thought you might be interested in some little different directions I'm going to take this, just as a way of maybe starting off and, and kind of re-energizing your, your stenciling printing process. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about overall pattern, because sometimes we're reluctant to think we're good at that and it's great to look out in nature it's great to look at commercial fabric just to get ideas for how pattern might happen but i want to show you this i know some of you have made some really great things out of one of my bird panels and so here's here's one of those bird panels let me just pin it on the dress form here but i'm putting this up because one of the things i want you to notice is the relationship between like a specific design and an overall pattern that might be repeated like as a print somehow. So what I what I really appreciate about this, and it's really fun to be making things out of this, and these are on my website if you're interested, these wing and a prayer panels. And so this was an all over pattern that I printed and drew, and then this was another specific design. So they could be used in really different ways, but I wanted to talk um, for a minute about pattern and how creating a border, like this could be a really great border design on a garment, on a dress, but you can create a border design with your stencils. And think about a border design as just a concentration of design elements at the edge. So that leaves it pretty open in terms of how you might interpret it. So I also have another piece here that's um, uh, kind of an overall pattern. And you can see a combination of kind of ghost shapes and um, specific images, a little bit of drawing. Um, you have your own style for doing this. And one of the things I wanted to show you right off, because this exists in, the, in, in this particular one, you can see this little edge that's kind of pale here. And then I do a lot of that kind of what I call ghost printing, which is things that kind of sit back in the design. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so I'm going to create, just show you kind of my take on a ghost, this ghost image idea. And a lot of the commercial stencils that you might have of mine or ones you've cut or someone else's have images that can work for this. And what I look for are images that are pretty open, that don't have a lot going on, where I can use an edge or something like this. This one happens to be the edge of a file folder, so that's... That's a pretty easy thing to find, and it's this edge right here on a file folder. So I've cut this um, to give myself another shape, and usually when I do a cloud shape, I want to do something fairly light, and I don't want to have a lot of um, a lot of color, or I don't want it to be the thing that stands out. So as I do this, you can kind of see I can use like one edge. Okay, so that doesn't show up very much, which is the whole idea of this kind of, a, this kind of an image. So if I was to take, and mostly you can see I'm working off the edge of the, of, the, of the stencil just to create that ghost image. So just this little simple shape that I've started with could be the, the beginning of something that I would layer back over later on in the process. So you can see it's a nice way of getting something into the background that you can pop forward with another image later. So oftentimes um, the shape, like I say, is really simple and it might have something to do with what happens on the top, then again it might not. Like here's an angle, maybe I want some little pointed pieces and you can see that that's just kind of a simple corner point shape right there which might lend itself to something I print in the future. So that's how you do these ghost shapes. And the ghost shapes I see as kind of the beginning layer of something that maybe I'll go back over the top of. Okay, the next thing I wanna share with you is a very cool idea about being able to drop a background in after you've already printed. I know it sounds counterintuitive that it would work that way, but check this out, okay? so here's. Here's a, um, a printing with green on this white linen of these uh, crickets and leaves stencils. And once that was finished, I felt like it was a little bit bare. So check this out. See, th this is the stencil. I actually put this stencil down and printed behind 
by doing that idea of the ghost printing. So I'm able to put another design feature into the background of something that's already printed. So that's a really awesome technique. So let me show you a little bit about how that works. So right here, I've got, So here I've got um, the Crickets and Leaves stencil, which was actually used to print this. And here's a piece of commercial fabric, a piece of commercial linen. It's beautiful, it's got interesting designs on it. And I might wanna go back and add more. I've got this cut out like it's a neckline, just because it could be interesting to kind of pop it that way. So I always look at what shapes kind of appear to be the most interesting there and what could I do to put something else into the image without making it look like it got stuck on. So if I look at this, I might decide, gee, it'd be great to go back over the darker areas with something lighter. So if I take white, for instance, and I put white over the top, there's a very subtle printing right there that just happened because I've used the white paint and I've worked over the top of the darker printed area. So you can see that's a really nice shape with that. And I might wanna repeat that in several different places. You can see it really changes the look of, of that piece of fabric. You could do this with stitching. You could do this with all kinds of things. Um, Sometimes I'm looking for something long and skinny, sometimes not. Maybe I'm looking to put more of a certain color in here. So if I was to take this kind of copper color and come back down this edge right here, and you can see when you're using a sponge, you know it's my favorite printing thing if you watch some of my YouTubes or my streaming video. Look at how beautiful that is on there. That really popped that out. Oh, I love that. So once I find something I really like, I'm all about repeating it. So, and with some stencil designs, you wanna, you wanna check it out, but oftentimes you can just rub with a sponge and get a really beautiful printing. Um, I, intention, I design all the stencils in my collection myself. They're all my original artwork. And I know what has to happen for the stencil to hang together. Sometimes you'll notice like there's some big open spaces and maybe you wanna fill that and maybe you don't. And maybe you want things to go behind and maybe you want things to come forward. So remember as you're doing this, the things are gonna drop back if you use um, a subtler color, if you use maybe a slightly darker color and things are gonna pop forward if you use something that's a little bit more dramatic. Now the other thing as I look at this that could be really fun would be to add some imagery around the neck of this that might um, inspire, you know, how the neck edge might go. So just remember you only need to, you don't have to use the entire stencil, okay? So walk it around like you're using it like a drawing tool. That's going to get you a bunch of really interesting effects. You might want to line something up and have it more exact, but see how this, this keeps just adding to the, the design and creating a little more interest everywhere in the, in the print. So I can go back with black. The black is very nice with it. I like that. So I might go back and just pick up parts of the stencil. See how I'm just picking up little bits here and there? So when I do this around the neck edge, I think of it as I, I'm creating like a little necklace on the garment, which is kind of a cool idea to think that you, the more you build up in a certain area, and you can see the black is really doing that, the more I build up in that, in that one area around the neck, the more I'm getting a, um, a design that does start to look like um, a necklace. And look at what I've got here. I've got this. This is beautiful. This is some metallic linen. And I could put that on there, but remember you can also go back and add the surface design to the, the linen or to what you would use as a band. 
So look at how this changes it. If I put paint on part of this and fold this, now look at that. See how that really starts to create another layer. So it could be the same stencil or it could be a contrasting stencil, but I think this could be a really cool top. So I might go back and actually um, uh, do this. And oftentimes I'm printing um, stuff that just gets used for trim. It doesn't even have to get used for anything besides trim, but you can see it'd be really, be really great along the edge of something. And I could continue pulling more of these colors in.